Hello. Do you want to play a game? Oh, hello. Do you want to play a game? Live or die. Make a choice. By watching this whole video. Hi, I'm Forrest from Toddy Rap. Today we're going to be talking about all the Saw movies. One of my friends wanted to do a thing on it. He got sick. So I'm stuck doing it by myself. We might do it at some point. But I want to get it out before Halloween. So we're going to go through every Saw movie. When people tell me to watch something, I'll watch it all. As If, if you want to see me watch all the Mummy movies, we have a podcast on that where I watch the original Mummy all the way through the basically newest Scorpion King. But today we're going to talk about Saw and stuff that came off of Saw, which I think is only one movie. And then there's that like weird number eight. But anyway, so first of all, I'd like to say the Saw movie is an interesting franchise. I like the concept of the first one. So in the first one, you have two characters, which man, good luck if I remember their names. I say a photographer named Adam Straithain, Straithain, height, straight height, stand height, whatever. I got two guys, <laughs> and uh, they both wake up, chain the pipes, and our lovely friend Jigsaw comes out, says, "Do you want to play a game on the TV screen?" And basically, these guys are stuck there, and they have to, they have to. Use their minds. <laughs> it sounds stupid, guys. To get out of the trap. What I understand from the first one, it's pretty livable. You know, I don't want to spoil anything yet. Oh, by the way, if you're watching this, I'm going to spoil every movie <laughs> if I want to talk about them. But see, I, I like the first one a lot because the first one's not just blood and gore. Like, I'm not a big slasher fan. So when I was watching these, I'm like, uh, I don't want to just watch people just get killed by weird machinery, which later on it becomes. But the first one, you get these two guys who are chained up and they don't trust each other, which I think is kind of weird. Like, I understand if you're put in this situation, you probably wouldn't trust the guy that is like over there. You're like, eh, I don't know who he is. But either way, you got the you got to trust the dude because you're stuck with him. So one is chained up to a radiator and the other one is chained up to the bathtub. Which the bathtub guy is just screwed in general. Because his, so spoiler, he has a key, which I'm pretty sure goes down the drain instantly in the first 20 seconds of the movie. And you're like, rip that guy. But he doesn't know that. So this, in this one, the I think the picture yeah, for Saw is a saw like a hacksaw and you're like oh well this is gonna be great <laughs> but either way so they they use their they try to convince each other that they're like you can trust me throw me this throw me that so they start doing it you start to learn that the one guy not the photographer but whoever the other guy is technically uh, sure whatever and realize that he's not a great person Technically, neither of them are, because the one guy is a photographer <laughs> of the guy who's been getting pictures about him and stuff. So, you know, it's kind of interesting to see them have that, like, dynamic between each other. But then you get into the meat of it. They start, they start to trust each other a little more. Some things are hidden, but they're like, oh, I want to escape. I need to escape, because life or death make the choice. That's what... He literally says in every damn movie. Well, yeah, somewhat. But I do like this one because you you get more of the, like, everyone could live, everyone could die. All they have to do is just kind of believe in each other, and they'll help each other out. And if they survive, yep, good job. If they didn't, well, welcome to Saw, I guess, where everyone is stupid. Uh, but this one's okay. Uh, it, I always feel like the first horror movie in the franchise is normally pretty good. Like, this movie was small. It was in one room, small budget, comparatively. Uh, 1.2 million. Uh, I can tell you what number two is real quick. 4 million, so quadruple your budget in one year. But, I don't know. It said you don't really have any real big actors. 
You got to Toby Tobin Bell. Tobin Bell? Tobin Bell, there you go. And uh the only other one I knew here was uh Michael Emerson. Oh, and Danny Glover, I guess. But I don't really remember him in the movie too much. But no no, you see you see the whole dynamic of them trying to escape and then you get the weird cops and stuff, but there's nothing that makes this to me, what the later Saw movies become, where it's just gore. You're just like, oh, look at this complex machine. And everyone gets cut in half, explodes, or something stupid like that. But for this one, cheaply made, small room, I think I give this movie, you know, I always go out of 10. I give this movie a 7.5 out of 10. Because I think it lives up to what I've heard of it. It's a Saw movie. You get the traps, but... Nothing crazy happens, and I really do like, <laughs> I love the voice for Saw. I think it's, like, later on, it changes, and you're just like, mm, it's not the same. Really later on. But, I say number one, I say number one is a must-watch horror movie. If you are a horror type of person, and this is psychological horror, not uh, gore porn, I would recommend this. If you're not into psychological horror and you're just here for the gore porn, probably watch this just to learn where it goes into. But I think this is one of the must-watch Halloween movies that, you know, probably most people have seen, haven't seen. But anyway, so we'll go on to the second one. Second one, surprising name, called Saw 2. This one is where, to me, it really changes. Because Saw 1, I picture everyone can escape. Saw 2... It slightly changes that, where I think most people can still escape if they work together. But like in most Saw movies, fuck, all the people are literally assholes. I had, I thought this one movie wasn't bad, but I had issues with all the people. <laughs> like I think there was only one, like the kid was fine. But you know, he, he kind of got screwed on who his father was. But I think this is where you really get into the, uh, more of the cop stuff. Yeah, you get, yeah, the cops start to come in. To, you get eight people who are trapped in an abandoned house. And, oh, this says, you know, succumb to his torturous and murderous games. One twist to his task. You know, what a fucking shitty, shitty line. Anyway, uh, so this one is interesting. So you get basically just a house where eight people are trying to escape. Some of them, seven of them are convicts, and one of them is. The father, the son of the father who's a cop, but he's a bad cop, so he's just kind of in there. I feel bad for him. I don't know why he's there. <laughs> they, they don't really explain it well. Like, I, I think you just throw the cop in, or I don't know. Throwing the kid in is just messed up. But it, it does make sense towards the end. Uh, this one, your main trap is, personally, I hate it, is the needle trap. <laughs> And it's also brutal how they do it. So it's a whole bunch of needles. And they have to go down in there to get. Pretty sure it's one injection. To save. Someone's life. If I'm mis not mistaken. And they're gonna, I, it's been about. A month since I've seen all these. So I'm trying to go off of notes. And off my head. But. Uh, this is the one where. You have this. One girl who's been in the thing twice. And you're like, damn, that's fucked up. And you're like, what did she do? And later on, you learn that she's just part of the, the group of Saw helpers, I guess you want to call it. But all these people are going through trying to do their task to get out. But then you get this one big ass brute dude that's like, fuck you. But yeah, anyway, so, so he's like, fuck you, and just kind of throws <laughs> throws the girl in to the trap. And you're like, oh, okay. And oh, the scene's so messed up. So she falls in, obviously, it's just used syringes. She's all covered in them. She's digging through it. She finds what she's looking for. Bam. They get the whatever they were looking for. I can't remember. 
But then later on, you, they all find out that the boy is the son of the cops. So they're now the big guy's looking for him to kill him because, you know, he's like, fuck that guy. You threw me in jail for no reason. I might as well just kill him because I might as well have done something to go to jail, I guess. I don't know. He's just an asshole. Worst character. But one of the traps is a, or not a trap, one of the codes is, what do you call it? A combination lock. And it's on their necks. And the only way to see it is either look at everyone's neck and tell them the code and then figure out the, the pattern. Or, as Crazy Big Dude does after he kills everyone to grab their code, because that makes no sense, he cuts it off his neck, looks at it, and then he gets killed by the fucking kid, if I'm not mistaken. And you're like, oh, fuck this guy. But, like, this one, to me, had some weird stuff. Like, this is where the house started to start killing people, like... You had the first part where the guy tries to open the door, the gun shoots him in the head, and you're like, okay, that guy died for no fucking reason. I guess we can't go out and, like, you know, go around, the gun's loaded, whatever. But, I don't know, this is, this movie, I still feel like, was decent. The, the only thing that happened in this one that I kind of liked was, uh, the cop. You know, like, since he was a bad cop, he's trying to save his son. He basically had to sacrifice himself. I don't think he dies, but to save his kid. And what all that stuff that happened to him, you know, they all survive. Yay. Girl survives, and you learn about why she's there. And, you know, you learn, you see the old man find, like, more. And, you know, I like the old man. I think he's a great character. But I think in this movie, like, you kind of see the old man, they capture him, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, well, this could be the end of the, this could be the end of the franchise. But guess what? It's not. We have six more movies to go through. Next. We're just going to fucking go through. So these are all one year apart. So this is Saw 3. Uh, budget. Oh, my. Oh, no. oh, that's not budget. Okay, that's box office gross. Well, this grows 164 million. Let's see what the budget. Budget of 10 million. So it doubled again. So we went from 1 million to 4 million to 10 million. So in Saw 3, what do I have for Saw 3? Uh, add people to his team. Oh, so this is where I think it just. Oh, sorry. Number two, I give a 4 out of 10. It finishes, to me, the franchise in my mind at this point. If you want to continue, I guess you can watch the rest. Anyway, number three. This is where Jigsaw finally shows that he has a team of, like, two or three people. Because you learn that Jigsaw is dying. And you're like, okay, he has cancer. So, I do like the idea of Jigsaw himself. So he gets people who have done wrong in life and tries to correct. He's basically saying, you sacrifice something here and survive. When you escape, you are reborn as a new person. Love this idea. Don't think it should be implemented in real life, but I think it's a great concept for a killer because he has motivation that makes sense. But... Since he's dying, you're like, okay, you kill him off, and hopefully, you know, people learn, or people are scared. I think what would have been better is to either make Jigsaw the puppet, like an actual being, like Chucky, or fucking making him alien. I don't fucking care. I think this is a great concept for a killer, but then they're like, since he's dying, fuck it, let's add some other people in, because what do you need in a movie? More cast members. I guess. <sighs> so in the third one, I'm going to look up the pictures because I don't remember what the third one is. Oh, uh, so the third one to me, I just didn't like the characters. All these characters made no sense to me. So you had the first death with the ripped uh, cage and, and then you had 
girl trying to heal fucking Jigsaw, but Jigsaw's like, nah, I'm gonna die. Nothing you can do will bring me back. And you have Crazy Girl who wants Jigsaw alive, which I don't even think is, like, part of her father. Or like, yeah, it's just... It makes no sense. They're just trying to keep him alive so she doesn't die. A.K.A., you know, spoilers. She fucking dies. <laughs> so pissed about the ending. It's like, they survive her all the way through. The cop's boy or husband or whatever, I'll save you. Takes a boom, dead. And you're like, fucking shit. Shit tier movie. Anyway. I never really feel bad for any of these characters that are stuck in the game. They kind of deserve it in this one. Like, they're real assholes. But this movie just really didn't, I just didn't like. This movie has way too much jumping around. Because you have the Jigsaw game that's going on. And then you have, like, the cops backstory. But then you have also Jigsaw being fucking bedridden. And then them trying to keep him alive. I love the part she's like, oh, I need this, this, and this. If I don't get it, he's going to die. And she's like, well, I got a scalpel. Keep him alive. And you're like, that's that's not how medicine works. But, you know, what does a doctor know? AK 2021. Don't listen to your doctors, I guess. But, uh, I don't know. If the movie didn't jump around, if you just followed, like, one of the three stories that were going on in this movie, it probably wouldn't be so bad. But, I don't know. It's like, in this movie, I like how, at the end, at least two could have survived. But but they killed the judge by a stray bullet. <laughs> it's like, come on. It's like, oh, a ricochet. Oh, he died. It's like, okay, he could have survived. They killed that man for no reason. It wasn't even, like, a glorious, bloody death like you expect in a song movie. He just dies. Uh, I can't remember. I don't know. This is one I just had huge issues with like i don't even think there's a main trap like the main trap on here shows the rib cage ripped open as like the like uh wings but i don't even really think that was like the main weapon in this there was there wasn't one was the issue oh, god this movie was so bad like <laughs> i'm not gonna lie i'm looking at my scores all the way down here they don't get much better <laughs> There's one thing I'm looking forward to talk to, but it's way farther down. So, I give this one, you know, your boy loves Saw, I guess, a 2 out of 10. Fuck this movie. So, we're going to go to 4. Probably one of the best films ever made. Starting to make less money. Good people. You're learning. Don't be a sheep. Don't watch Saw 4. Let's see, what was the budget for this one? Let's see if it was in the same area. Also four million. So it looks like they're just like, fuck it. You get four million and we'll make a hundred million off of your back. Or sorry, ten million. So this one is four. So this one you have the weird it starts off with the weird autopsy on Jigsaw and he's got something in his fucking throat because he's or stomach because he's a crazy man that sold a cassette tape, which was like the size of my neck. But so, well, I guess he did the mini cassettes. That's not so bad. But anyway, he warns that there's another game afoot. And you're like, okay. So they send the SWAT team to find out, you know, who's being fucked. But. Oh, sorry. I blanked out what movie I was on. I was thinking I was on three for a second. But I do like this premise. I like the idea that, you know, he set up one more game. Like, you know, sure. Three, he's dying. Four, he's he's dead. He is dead. Trust me. And you're like, oh, he set up one more game. He's like, knock that guy out. I'm dead anyway. Fuck it. We're going to send one more out there. But... So much happened in this movie. <laughs> this is us. This has been the issues with all these movies. They're like, show much shit in your face. It's like, give me the, the story arc. Let me see the people go crazy. Let me see them suffer. Not just let me see like, oh, let me cut to the cops trying to find the guy. Oh, let me cut back to Saw. Guy died. Okay, let me cut back to Saw <laughs> to the cops. Let me see another guy blow up in blood. It's like, oh my god. 
But, you know, I feel like they've decided where they want to go. And it's gore porn that isn't even that bad. Like, I hate gore. Like, I don't hate it, but sometimes it makes me sick. This movie is, I'm just like, yeah, I just started laughing. If you want to watch it, if you want it for the laughs, these are probably not bad movies. If you're here to be scared or to watch someone brutally die, go watch Live Leak. But, where did I put it? Someone had a. Oh, this is a stupid one. So, this is where the cop is trying to. It all comes down to the cops. Like, yeah, you know, I understand there's bad cops in every Saw movie, but. I guess I do like the opening one where you have blind guy and guy that's fucking taped to the mouth. And it's like, you know, they're trying to pull each other. One has to die to get out. See, this is where, this is my issue still, is you can, one person is going to die. No one should die in these. Give me like one or two where everyone had a chance to survive to be reborn. You know, don't tell me it's like, I had to kill someone to be reborn. Nah. That's what all fucking serial killers say. But you get some weird traps in this one that are just kind of, you know, kind of fucked up, but are unnecessary. Because you get, like, that weird face trap where he has to push his face and it cuts him up. You get the weird fucking uh, trap where the guy's pierced with fucking, what do you call them? Almost arrows, basically. And she has to pull him out, but if she does, she kills him because they're, you know, going through all his organs or vital spots. God, there's so many shitty fucking traps in this one. Yeah, you get the hair trap in this one. Oh, my God. Well, anyway, I, I don't really have much to say about this one for some reason. I think the only thing weird is, like, the... Like, in this one, you think that it's like, oh, maybe he's still alive, still doing the traps. But you really learn quickly that, no, you get, he's still got his fucking lackeys doing all this shit. But you get the weird, I guess at the end, you have the weird ice trap where the guy's stuck on the ice and he'll hang himself. And the other guy's, if that guy goes into, the, like, switches, like, a pedestal, basically, and they lose the balance, the other guy gets electrocuted. Well, and behold, the guy runs up to go save everyone. Boom. Dies. Everyone dies. Uh, I guess you also get the one guy who killed his daughter in the car. Which, you know, he didn't fully mean it's like drunk driving. You know, I feel bad. But, you know, fuck, fuck everyone in this movie. Yeah. Yeah. Saw number four, also a two. So they don't get much better. Kind of. So, so number five only made a hundred. Oh man, made nothing. Let's see what the budget was. Oh, ten million also. Oh, god, only made fucking a thousand percent. I'm so sorry. Fall number is up. So number five. All these beginning guys that suck, that die, suck. There for no reason. I remember them. I'm look. You know, I'm gonna have to look it up. Saw 5, let's look at images. Oh, I forgot, so Saw so 5, you get the weird, interesting, like, guy's gonna drown, and you're like, there's no way this guy's gonna escape. I don't see anything that is gonna reborn him, basically. So he fucking stabs himself in the neck with a pen and breathes. This is the biggest brain idea I've ever seen, but you, you probably still die at some point. But I'm like, yeah, the box... Is an interesting concept. I, I like it. I think it would have been better if it was actually like it, it's considered the main trap in this one, which doesn't make sense because it's like the beginning trap. And the beginning trap is normally just someone dying in a dumb way. Because that's what you'll notice. If you've gone through five, if you've gone this far with me, you will know <laughs> that each trap, there's in the beginning, there's just some guy dying for no fucking reason. So either way. You're like, okay, I like the concept. Not really a way to get out. But this is where you get the weird, I think it's like five or six people that wake up as usual, fucking not paying attention. And they have to, like, instantly wake up and do something. And all these you can survive in. Like, you, 
it doesn't make sense to me, like, their, their thought process. So, the first trap is, like, they have to go cut themselves on the saw blade. It looks painful. But, you know, you go, a little bit of blood, you're good, you can get out. One guy's chained, blah, 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 he dies, who gives a shit? So, you get the second trap, which is... Oh, man. I don't fucking remember the trap order. Well, I can't remember. I think it's the poison needles, and one... One needle is good and three is bad and some person's poison. Basically, they have to choose the right needle, which all the needles are labeled. If you do some quick math, you can figure it out. But she doesn't like needles, so she's crying. She gets stabbed with all three. She dies. They can move on. So the third one is the fire one, where they have like three or four ports. Not enough for everyone, but if you just obviously crammed yourself in and doubled up you would have been fine like i don't know why they sacrificed They're like oh we only got four we got four people and three three things left what are we gonna do you know maybe not just all fucking sacrifice a dude for no fucking reason and then i'm trying to think i know the last one in this one is the fucking the last one is like it's two people left so they could have made it all the way through. It tells them they could have made it all the way through. I'm like, love it. And they have to sacrifice, like, it's a lot of blood. It's basically like half your blood in your body. If they both sacrifice, it'd be half your blood or one full. Yeah, that's what it's, it'd be half your blood or one full person's body. What they're going to die. And you're like, damn, that's fucked up. But, you know, being the selfish bastards, all of them are. And that one guy really kind of killing everyone because he's like, fuck it, we're just going to kill and move on. And he kind of screwed everyone. So, yeah. The movie was pretty fucked up. <laughs> yeah, so I was looking at the front trap. Oh, yeah, the, the key. They had, the, they had the key around their neck that they had to go get the fucking... Or the collar around their neck that they had to go get the key. That's what it was. That was the first trap. But anyway, this one. I don't remember even how it ends. Main trap was water. Cool. Garbage movie. Also a two. Okay, let's move on to six. God, we got technically like one more in my mind. Six? Eleven million dollar budget. I wonder how much this one made. Let's see, box office. Eh, my ass made a lot less. Six point two, but that's just box office. So. Anyway. So number six. Wow, <laughs> things are getting even smaller. Sorry, I'm gotta go at images. The number six, you get the most famous probably saw trap. I like how it takes us far to get to the fucking the biggest one. You get the the mouth one, but uh, you get first trap, which is with a uh, husband and wife, I believe, and they have to get rid of flesh. So you got fat husband, and he's like. Uh, shaving off fat she is fucking like skinny wife and she's a fucker she cuts like her arm off and throws it in she wins that guy dies it's another bullshit trap that you know both of you can't live what is this trailer what was that trailer what the fuck don't look up the saw trailer it for number six it doesn't make any sense. So I think this is where you get the FBI agent, which I think is actually a pretty good one. So he gets stuck in the uh, you know, saw game as usual. And he has to escape. And uh, I don't remember if he's the FBI agent or the lawyer. I can't quite remember. Will it tell me? But the FBI agent closes in. I'm going to guess he's a lawyer because that's what most of these seem to be. So, or is this the book one? 
Pero... Uh, oh no, this is the guy who says he's okay. Never mind. So this is the one where they he says he's been through Saw, and he signed Saw or Jigsaw's book, and he's like, okay, you know, don't lie, blah blah blah, and he takes the cover off, throws it away, takes the signed book. And he basically recreates everything that he survived through, but with a twist this time. So this time he gets like his janitor, his like fucked up, oh, they're not lawyers, they're insurance agents, that's what they're, um, they're fucked up guys who are like denied, you have health problems, I'm not paying for your health problems because you know I'm an insurance company and I just make money fuck you but I'm like okay these this guys you know he's a fucked up guy whatever I guess he's not the book guy no he's just the fucked up guy but anyway so he gets he gets thrown in and now he's got to make this one I think is really good because he has to make decisions again where he's like you know, I can lose this, but save this person. Or this person will die. Again, people are dying for no fucking reason. But, you know, you have to make your choices to who you think is more important to survive. So in, in 6, I have this written down. So I feel like they kill way too many people in the movies. Like, in all the movies. And not enough with just, like, one sad thing. But I find horror where you know the character more scary. Where, you know, you're not just dealing with some random asshole. And you're like, oh, let me solve the puzzle with them. Which is basically Jigsaw of me trying to solve the puzzle. But in this one, you learn about him. You go through his whole, like... Like, you learn that he's an asshole. But he's doing it for the money, which is most people anyway but it's like it's understandable but i do think this one helps out that you're just following this one guy through and i think this is another one where you where they think he's still alive he came back from the dead and they unbury him i think and he's not there really shitty uh i think this one the intro the this is probably one of the most interesting what do you find killing weapons uh it's the carousel right. yeah, i'm making sure i'm just not backwards here guys yeah so i have a picture of something else i want to make sure it wasn't the same one you get a lot of good like weapons in this one because you get the 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 jigsaws backwards bear trap and then you get the carousel so the carousel is pretty interesting so he has one two six people that has been killing basically saying denying people killing them and they've been paying money to them but they're the ones that decide who lives or who dies so this time he's like let's play a game live or die so he has six people and it spins around and he has he can pull the pin to stop two shots so out of six people he can save two people and you know it's spinning it stops i think it gives you like it's quick it's like four seconds but they're all you know don't kill me don't kill me you know because they don't want to die makes sense but they all start, you know, saying why they shouldn't die, blah, blah, blah. And he ends up saving two. The rest of them, he just sits there and just watches die because he can't do anything. I don't know what would happen if he stopped more than that. I think every time he does it, he sacrifices, I think it's a finger. Or, like, it breaks a finger or something because he has to, like, hold it down. So he sacrifices something to save at least the two, which I think is a really great trap. So people still die. But I think what he goes through through this whole arc is a pretty character development which i think is amazing uh, but i do think it's interesting that it, like at least in this one that he has to 
as a man who does life insurance to choose who lives or who dies, that he gets put through all the ringer to basically learn that what he's doing is fucked up. It doesn't feel like something that should be said. It should be quite obvious. But I do think it helps a lot in this film that it's a very good backstory. This is probably the first one in a while where it's like, this is also a must watch. Uh, the twist at the end where the family, he let his father die and can now kill the asshole is a great idea. I guess. I can't remember. Oh, I remember. Yeah, yeah. Where they basically, it goes back and flip a ruse. So, surprisingly, <laughs> after six movies, I give this one a 6 out of 10. That's a must-watch Jigsaw movie. I'd say watch 1, 2, 6. <laughs> We're finally here. The final. Part 7. A.K.A. I'm pretty sure it's called, here we go, Jigsaw. The final chapter. This came out in 2010. 3D movie. $20 million budget. Let's see how much it, it grossed. A hundred things. It makes the same amount of money. No matter how much money you put in this movie. It makes the same thing. So this one. Gotta love it. We're hitting that time period. 3D movies. I don't got a 3D TV, but who gives a shit? It's funny as fuck. So this one starts off, and you get the... They almost look like brothers, I'm not going to lie. I guess they're kind of. But you get a girl who's chained up, and she's cheating. Or she's fucking both of them. And they're stuck to a saw trap. So they can push, pull, or just put it in the middle. So they push... They can push each other, and who's ever stronger kills. Or they can pull and sacrifice themselves to save the girl, like one of them. So one person has to die in this trip. And so they're in public, everyone's seeing it. I think it's pretty cool, so they all wake up, they all think it's fake, blah, blah, blah. And then you see Jigsaw come out of his little, little, little bike. And he's like, let's play a game. And you're like, oh shit, it's fucking for real. And so she, the, he basically says, it's going to lower and whoever dies, two people will survive. So they're, you know, they're pushing and pulling. They're like, I'm going to save you. I love you. And then one guy's like, realizes, I think as he's getting pushed, he's like, nah, man, fuck this chick. <laughs> She's cheating on both of us. <laughs> so they're like, yeah, fuck her. So I just let her die. Gets cut in half. I'm like, yeah, these two guys, pretty, they're pretty good. But what makes this film amazing you know, as a man who grew up 90s, 2000s, fucking Chester from Linkin Park is in this one. His, th this death isn't like super crazy. This is a good trap too because everyone can survive. But the other four people are just based on him. So it's a pretty interesting trap. So he's stuck in a car. He's fucking super glued to the fucking back and he's going to pull his back off to push a button. And I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. But they only give him like a minute. So he's trying to do that. His acting is pretty good because it's just basically him screaming. And he's attached to the car. And once the car gets to full speed, it breaks down and crushes a head blower. And it rips off like a jaw and some other bullshit. So they all fucking, you know, he doesn't make it in time because I guess he's not strong enough or some bullshit. And <laughs> all his friends die instantly. And then he gets driven out and you're like oh he'll survive he fucking hits and he gets shot out the fucking front window could have probably survived so he could have survived this no matter what almost but i do think it's great to see chester my van man rest in peace actually in one of these movies pretty funny i'd watch that scene so I can watch it on youtube don't watch the rest of this movie but uh there's a detective in this movie like everyone Horrible fucking acting. It just it just hurts. It's like I, there's so much more budget. The going Chester, I doubt it. I think he did it probably for free. But you're just like, why why is this movie so fucking bad? 
I almost think this this movie had good side traps in it. Like, I think the main stuff, which I don't even remember what the main thing is in this one. The main thing in this one was 3D. What is that? What's the, what's the picture on this one? I'm going to guess the picture of the car. So I guess the main trap is the car. But I don't really fully remember. I'm going to read some of the notes I have. <clears throat> I like they use uh, the, the guy, the main guy that said he was a survivor. Oh, this is where he is. And then he puts him through the test. I actually think this part's pretty interesting. So he's a guy who said he survived the saw trap. Kind of restating what I did in the other one. Um, and he signed his book, threw, it, threw the cover away. So he's like, oh, you're lying, but don't lie, blah, blah, blah. So he basically says, fuck it. I'm going to put you through all the traps that you read about so your book is real. I think it's a great concept. Uh, I wish the other puzzles were kind of like that or, you know. This one, to me, I feel like just Jigsaw went out of his way to say, fuck you personally for lying. Like, he's not, like, the other people hurt people, uh, you know, did did bad things. This guy just lied and made money. Not the worst. I think just Jigsaw just had it out for this guy. <laughs> uh, uh, I have no idea what I'm going to say. Uh, yeah, I just kind of love the subplot to this one. There, there's a few holes in it, but what, what do you expect? And I do hate that this one. You starting to see the new jigsaws come out fully, and you're like, "Go away! I just want to see our our main man." <laughs> but. I don't really have much to say anymore about these movies. I, I just restate everything. But, oh, you do you do see them go back to the original spot where the two people were probably starved to death. They kind of mummified. Uh, but the, he gets stuck. The, the 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 detective gets caught down there. He's chained to the thing. The one guy kills him. End of the movie. End of the series. End of the franchise, some would say. This movie, like the rest, messy. But you had Chester in it, so you get four. Probably been like a two or a three out of ten. But if you like this, please. Oh, wait, but there's more. Part eight. Fucking like seven years later. You thought this was over. I wish it was. Fucking 2017. Went back to the $10 million budget. Let's see how much this fucking goddamn movie made. Part 8. Uh, gross. Profit. $27 million. It's gotten down. It's also seven years later. Like, anyone fucking wants to watch these movies anymore? I can tell you I don't. Now, this is the one where they're stuck to chains and they have to fucking fight their way out. This one's just weird. Like, they're stuck to the train. They get pulled through. And this one's also, I just realized, it's called Jigsaw and not called Cell. Which I think is interesting. So, in this one, it starts off with their, the cops are chasing this guy. He's got like a bomb collar, I think, on. And he's like, oh no, if I, he's like, I gotta press this button. If I don't, I'm gonna die. And basically when he presses it, it starts all the people down in Jigsaw. So if he doesn't really press the button, wouldn't have started anything. Everyone would have been woken up and been like, what the fuck? And nothing would have happened. But no, the guy presses the button and the fucking cops just fucking unload. Well, one cop unloads on the fucking guy. You're like, cool. Well, <laughs> so, so the first death is kind of stupid. Everyone's getting pulled in. It's the one where they have to cut themselves. Uh, the farthest guy 
first death is stupid. He just never gets woken up. He just dies. And you're like, oh, okay. I feel, I feel bad for that, man. But, yeah. So, they all cut themselves, blah, 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 move on. Uh, they have some of the fucking future technology where it cuts lasers. Oh, this is... Oh, man. I got two of them mixed up. Oh, this is the one with the, the syringes. Uh, she had to figure out a number thing. Could have been easy. Fucking couldn't figure it out. She died. Uh, what the fuck? Saw is back in this one. We saw him die. No clue why where he came back. But wait. It's a twist. He never came back. This is just something really old. And I don't really understand. <laughs> because basically... They were saying stuff was going on. Which stuff was technically moving forward. But they were showing an old... Like one of his originals traps. So... This is where I think you first meet the one girl that goes crazy with the needles in her back. This is where the one she survives. But. Sorry guys. I'm just blanking out. Talking about Saw just corrupting my brain. But anyway. So that's stupid. That the cancer thing was a name. Was a name that flipped so he could. Oh. So one of the guys goes there. He's stuck there because there's two. One has cancer, one doesn't have cancer x-rays, I guess. And the guy messes up by putting the wrong one under the name. It could have been saved a lot earlier. He dies. I kind of feel bad for him. People mess up. Don't put him through this fucking shitty ass trap. But, yeah, as usual, no one survives this one, I believe. But this is where you get the weird cop thing. Where he gets the fucking laser thing around his neck. And if the guy tells the truth, it like the lasers come down, cut him, but it doesn't. So he fucking lies, of course. And then he's like, "Oh, you're wrong." Then his head just fucking explodes, like literally cuts open. You're like, obviously the other guy got fucking not real laser, fucking bullshit. Yeah. So the one guy, they both had the same thing, and you can see the burning up top. One guy had laser pointers, and the other one had some bootleg fucking laser technology. Gee, that's not real. So the laser pointer guy is like, oh, no, I fucked up. And it, it goes to him, and a little blood spurts out, and he dies. And you're like, okay, well, if that was real, the lasers would have sliced him. The other guy lied. The lasers just fucking watermelon his head and fucking split it up into pieces. You're like, you fucking dumb shit. <sighs> the ending was stupid in this one to watch like the old game like it was just a whole basically it was like it's a dream that's what this whole one was all the stuff that they were going for he was already dead this is just old as fuck i think this would have been cool if it was like i don't know as one of the first ones i don't think it needed to be added here but i do think this one was interesting comparatively i do give this one a four out of ten still it has some interesting concepts, some interesting... I do like the traps in this one. But you do... doesn't help each other. Four out of ten. And then finally... Finally, guys, it's over. We have Spiral. <laughs> so Spiral is a brand new movie. Let's see when it came out. 2021, guys. Huge cast. This movie cost $40 million. You have Chris Rock, Samuel L. Jackson, and then the same few people from fucking uh, everything. Let's see. How much is this gross? Ooh! Ooh! We only like double this money. Imagine only doubling your money when you have Chris Rock and fucking Samuel L. Jackson in your fucking movie. Anyway, so this one's a weird one. It's it's not even... It's not Jigsaw, but it is. It's in the same universe. But not. <laughs> so you get Jigsaw. Brand new voice. Totally different people. Because they're... Basically this one they said... Okay, the other guy died. He finished all his murders that he wanted to kill. Or change. Kill. 
And we're going to do our own because, you know, I, I hate people's lives, though, I guess. So you get pig dudes instead of fucking cool spiral face. The pig dudes look cool. Sad. The voices are annoying. Interesting that, you know, you think it's a copycat, like, but it's going after bad cops, which is what Spiral's been doing the whole time, basically. It's been going after cops, bad cops, and, you know, they've been doing things. So I think that concept is pretty similar. I think Chris Rock is actually super annoying in this movie, which is very surprising. But I don't think he's meant to play <laughs> this type of character. It just doesn't make sense to me. But what do I know? That's Spiral. Uh, yeah. Uh, in this one, all the deaths are stupid. None of them are impactful. None of them make sense why they die, why they had to die. I said, this one, I think the people from Saw just said, fuck it. They just want people dead and they're now just having fun with the games instead of doing what they're meant to do, change lives. It makes sense, but I just, just kind of hate it. But. Oh, yeah, and the fucking ending was so stupid. So, Chris Rock and Samuel L., they're basically father and son. Samuel L. best likely has to sacrifice himself to save Chris Rock. Blah, blah, blah. Garbage movie. Detective garbage. Garbage. Uh, uh, garbage. I give this a 3 out of 10. Definitely don't watch this movie. I'll tell you the list right now. If you sat through this for some fucking reason and you don't know, you want to know which ones to watch? One. Two. Six. Uh, watch watch the first half of Seven and Chester. You know, just watch Seven. We'll, we'll say that. And that's it. I give you four out of nine movies that you can watch with one being a must-watch movie. The rest of these, I think the series has run my brain. I remember after finishing it, I'm like, I kind of just want to watch people do crazy shit <laughs> or get basically trapped, but I'm done with them. And thank God I'm done with them. So, all in all, I think so. Let's see. There's basically 10 movies, right? So, eight, nine, there's nine movies. And I said watch four of them, so I give this series a four out of 10. There's some of them that are must watches, but I just don't think this, like, they killed this series after one. If you just went down the psychological route with people dying in shitty ways that could escape and maybe have some of them escape. And have them tell their stories, I think is a really good concept. But since basically everyone just dies and you're just here to watch people die. Like I said, there, there's other movies out there. But don't watch these. But anyway, thank you for watching. Check on our uh, Instagrams all down here. I We do a podcast every week unless we're busy. And most of the time we still have one. But, you know, and support our Etsy shop wares so I can get a better setup. Because the setup is not great. <laughs> but hopefully it sounds better. Next time I'll have an actual mic. Maybe an actual camera and not using my phone. But see you in the next one, guys. Bye-bye.